Hi, welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about my five star predictions for 2024. I hope you guys like the new background, new filming location. I'm still trying to figure out how to film in this room that I live in. Um, and I don't really mind this one. I do have my bookshelf right there. I wish I could do like a cute little, um, did I say bookstore? Bookshelf? I do have my bookshelf right there. I do have my bookshelf right there. A cute little like me sitting with a bookshelf behind me moment, but it's very, um, short. If I sound a little congested, I am a little bit sick. Um, so I have high hopes for 2024. Um, my reading year this year has been a bit up and down. I think sometimes I've been feeling like, how do I describe this? Like, I really want to be reading fantasy in 2024. Um, I am so excited about fantasy books. I really think that there's a lot that I'm going to love. And my 2023 has been all right. There's definitely been a few like standouts, but for the most part, kind of mid, I think. Um, so here's hoping that next year is better. I do have quite a long list because I got really excited <laughs> making this list. So this could be quite long. Also, I wanted to note, um, these are books that have, these are not books that are coming out in 2024. These are books that I am hoping to read in 2024. But I think let's just get straight into it. The first book on my list is a bit rogue because I've never read from this author before um but i'm so intrigued by this book and that is the shards by brett easton ellis now brett easton ellis wrote american psycho which i really do want to read because i love that film it's very disturbing and i heard that the book is worse i don't know i also really want to read that but the shards has kind of like drawn me in it's about a serial killer i don't know if i'm mistaken but i kind of thought it was about a cult but I don't think it is anymore now reading this description, but I'm gonna read what Goodreads says. Okay, 17 year old Brett is a senior at the exclusive Buckley Prep School when a new student arrives with a mysterious past. Robert Mallory is bright, handsome, charismatic, and shielding a secret from Brett and his friends, even as he becomes a part of their tightly knit circle. Brett's obsession with Mallory Also just notice that the main character in this book is called Brett and like it's written by a guy named Brett. What is that? I'm... That makes me more interested in this book. Um, Brett's obsession with Mallory is equaled only by his increasingly unsettling preoccupation with the Trawler, a serial killer on the loose who seems to be drawing ever closer to Brett and his friends, taunting them and Brett in particular with grotesque threats and horrific, sharply local acts of violence. The coincidences are uncanny but they're also filtered through the imagination of a teenager whose gifts for constructing narrative from the filaments of his own life are about to make him one of the most explosive literary sensations of his generation. Is this about Brett? Is this a... Is this like autofiction where it's actually like about his life? <laughs> like, what do you mean? Can he trust his friends or his own mind to make sense of the danger they appear to be in? Thwarted by the world and by his own innate desires, buffeted, buffeted? Yeah, buffeted by unhealthy fixations, he spirals into paranoia and isolation as the relationship between the trawler and Robert Mallory hurls inexorably toward a conclusion. And it's set in the 1980s in LA. I don't know. I'm. That sounds really interesting. I've heard crazy things about this book, and I love a good crazy psychological thriller um this book also has a 3.99 in goodreads which i think is a quite good sign like that's pretty good it is chunky it's um 595 pages but i don't know i'm really excited to read it what are the people saying oh so this review says it's pseudo auto fictional i don't really know what to think i don't know i don't know um i just have a weird weird like pull towards this book and I have for quite a while so I'm interested in exploring that <laughs> okay 
Um, next up we have Confessions by Kane Minato. It's a Japanese novel that was translated to English by Steven Snyder. Um, and it's about a teacher whose students killed her daughter. And she's gonna get revenge. Um, what? Like, what? That's so crazy. I just hear crazy things about this book. And that's kind of the theme so far of these two recommendations. Like, these are just books that I hear are insane. And I love a book that's gonna really grip me. I could be mistaken, but I think that this book is set over the course of just like one final lecture that this student is giving, that this teacher is giving to her students. Don't know, really intrigued by that one. The next book that I think would be five stars for me is Any Man by Amber Tamblyn. This book was recommended by Katie Colson in one of her videos. She is probably my favorite booktuber. I just love her. Um, and if she loves anything, I will give it a chance. This book, to be fair, really sounds like it's something that I would enjoy. It is a book that comes with lots of trigger warnings, so beware. This is about a serial rapist that is a woman. I've heard it's very difficult to read. I've heard that the prose is really poetic. I think that there is actually some poetry in here. And I'm really interested to see how this kind of inversion of like a something that would be typically thought of as a male thing um, is kind of turned on its head. So yeah, this is what Goodreads says about it because I feel like I'm kind of coming up short on what to say um, and like why I would want to read this book. Um, so it says, a violent serial rapist is on the loose who goes by the name Maud. She hunts for men at bars, online, at home. The place doesn't matter, neither does the man. Her victims must then live in the aftermath of their assault in the form of doubt from the police, feelings of shame, alienation from their friends and family, and the haunting of a horrible woman who becomes the phantom on which society projects its greatest fears, fascinations, and even misogyny. All the while, the police are without leads and the media hounds the victims, publicly dissecting the details of their attack. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how Tamblyn kind of explores the aftermath of SA um, and rape if, when these things are happening to men. Like, the police are not believing a man. Um, I don't know. I'm really interested in this. Um, definitely not going to be an easy read, but one that I think, if kind of handled properly, could easily be a five star for me. Okay, now we have the first in a long line of fantasy books slash series that I think could be five stars. I really wanna read fantasy in 2024. I wanna read more of the fantasy genre. I think especially because I study English lit at school, I tend to gravitate towards fantasy because it reminds me of the books I used to read when I was a kid. And that's like a nice escape for me. And the first fantasy book that I think could be five stars is The Book That Wouldn't Burn by Mark Lawrence. This is the first in a series called The Library Trilogy and it's set in a library, which is like one of my favorite things in books. I loved Sorcerer of Thorns, which was partly set in a library. And I just love books about books. I'm gonna read you the synopsis on Goodreads. Um, a boy has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library. This was, okay, this has a 4.14 rating on Goodreads, which is really good. And it was also in the a nominee for the best fantasy books of the Goodreads Choice Awards, which sometimes the Goodreads Choice Awards like really don't mean anything because I think, no shade but also 100% shade, um, like Colleen Hoover's in there. And I wouldn't, and like Fourth Wing, and I wouldn't really say um, that those are great books, but I have heard really good things about this one. So it says, a boy has lived his whole life trapped within a vast library, older than empires and larger than cities. A girl has spent hers in a tidy, tiny settlement out on the dust, capital D, 
where nightmares stalk and no one goes. The world has never even noticed them. That's about to change. This, their stories spiral around each other across worlds and time. This is a tale of truth and lies and hearts and the blurring of one into another. A journey on which knowledge erodes certainty and on which, though the pen may be mightier than the sword, blood will be spilled and cities burned. I feel like that's quite a vague synopsis. It's really just saying that, yeah, there are two characters. One of them lives in a library and their past will converge and like fantasy stuff is gonna happen. But I'm really intrigued. And I think any book set in a library has the potential to be five stars for me. Okay, next, this is one that I have such high hopes for. It's actually scary. Um, and that is none other than Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. This is the beginning of the Realm of the Elderlings series, like multiple series. Um, and it's widely regarded as like one of the best kind of worlds in fantasy, I believe. What I've heard about this series is that they're very character driven stories and I love that. So I think that some people, their critique is like, oh, it's too slow, I was bored, but I think that I'll probably love it. And I think I'd be really sad if I didn't. So I'm kind of scared to read this, but I really, really want to. So yeah, I'm going to read the synopsis on Goodreads. In a faraway land where members of the royal family are named for the virtues that they embody, one young boy will become a walking enigma. Born on the wrong side of the sheets, Fitz, son of chivalry farseer, is a royal bastard, cast out into the world, friendless and lonely. Only his magical link with animals, the old art known as the wit, gives him solace and companionship. But the wit, if used too often, is a perilous magic and one abhorred by the nobility. So when Fitz is finally adopted to the, into the royal household, he must give up his old ways and embrace a new life of weaponry, scribing, courtly manners, and how to kill a man secretly as he trains to become a royal assassin. I don't know, it sounds great. It's like high fantasy. I just have heard the most incredible things about this world and I'm really, really excited to read about it. Next up, this is a book that I don't know how I haven't read it yet, A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson. I am, I like, why haven't I read it? Everyone loves this book. It is basically the story of Dracula's first wife who I think kills him. Um, but it's told in these little vignettes and I've read the first couple pages and it's incredible. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna give like a full synopsis, but that's basically what it's about. And I think it could easily be five stars for me. Next, another fantasy series that I wanna start next year. And this is The Blade Itself, which is the first in the first Law series by Joe Abercrombie. Um, I've heard so much about Joe Abercrombie. Um, his books are grim dark, which is just, just means that they're really dark and violent. And yeah, but another one of the things I've heard about him is that his character work is incredible. And I really, really value great character work in fantasy novels. Um, so The Blade itself, Wow, okay, this, this is one of these synopses, which is just like, there's four different characters that it's telling you about. So I guess I'll, I will read it to you. Lone in Nine Fingers, infamous barbarian has finally run out of luck. Caught in one few too many, he's on the verge of becoming a dead barbarian, leaving nothing behind him but bad songs, dead friends, and a lot of happy en enemies. Nobleman Captain Jazal Dan Luther, <laughs> dashing officer and paragon of selfishness, I kind of love this synopsis so far, has nothing more dangerous in mind than fleecing his friends at cards and dreaming of glory in the fencing circle. But war is brewing, and on the battlefields of the frozen north, they fight by altogether bloodier rules. Inquisitor Glockta, cripple turned torturer, would like nothing better than to see Jazal come home in a box. But then Glockta hates everyone. Cutting treason out of the union, one confession at a time, leaves little room for friendship. His latest trial, trail of corpses may lead him right to the rotten heart of government, if he can stay alive long enough to follow it. Enter the wizard, 
by us. See, like everyone, there's a little group we have here. Are they all men? Boo. Uh, maybe not a five star. I don't, we'll see. I bet it's probably, it's going to be a five star. Uh, it's going to be a five star. Um, a bald old man with a terrible temper and a pathetic assistant, he could be the first of the Magi. He could be a spectacular fraud, but whatever he is, he's about to make the lives of Lod Logan, Jazal, and Glockta a whole lot more difficult. Murders, conspiracies rise to the surface, old scores are ready to be settled, and the line between hero and villain is sharp enough to draw blood. That's the first law. I mean, the blade itself, the first book of the first law. I'm really excited about it. I don't know, I, I'm really excited. Aside from the fact that it's all men. This next one, I'm just gonna men mention really quickly because it is a classic, but it's a classic that I've heard is so many people's favorite books that I can't ignore it. And it's a book that I've been wanting to read for a very long time. And that is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. The classic tale of a man who builds another man out of the parts of other men. Um, enough said about that. Oh my God. Okay, this next book I've been wanting to read forever. And I think I'm just gonna have to buy it. It's Paradise Rot by Jenny Havel. And if you know me, you know I love a grimy, gritty, girly, psychotic time. And this seems to be just that. Joe is in a strange new country for university and having a more peculiar time than most. A house with no walls, a roommate with no boundaries, and a home that seems ever more alive. Joe's sensitivity and all her senses become increasingly heightened and fraught as the lines between bodies and plants, dreaming and wakefulness blur and mesh. This debut novel from critically acclaimed artist and musician Jenny Vival presents a heady and hypersensual portrayal of sexual awakening and queer desire, a complex, poetic, and strange novel about bodies, sexuality, and the female gender. I don't know, couldn't really tell you what this is about. I think it's just that she lives in this place with her roommate and things get weird. Um, but I'm so intrigued. Also, side note, I think another novel by Jenny Haval that could be five stars for me is Girls Against God, but I'm not really gonna go into that. Okay, next is a big one. And that is Jade City by Fonda Lee. Um, this series has so much hype. I, I, I've heard very, very few people say that they don't like this series and I'm afraid to be one of them. Um, this is an urban fantasy um, about kind of like mobsters. Um, and I'm gonna read the synopsis cause that's all I know about it. <laughs> so, okay. The Call family is one of two crime syndicates that control the island of Kekan. Kekin? Kikon? I'm gonna say Kikon. It's the only place in the world that produces rare magical jade, which grants those with the right training and heritage superhuman abilities. The green bone clans of honorable jade-wearing warriors once protected the island from foreign invasion, but nowadays in a bustling post-war metropolis full of fast cars and foreign money, the green Greenbone families, like the Calls, are primarily involved in commerce, construction, and the everyday upkeep of the districts under their protection. When the simmering tension between the Calls and their greatest rivals erupts into open violence in the streets, the outcome of this clan war will determine the fate of all Green Bones and the future of Kikon itself. Sounds exciting and again, have heard so many good things about it. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm looking for a fantasy series that I read one and I immediately feel like I have to pick up the next. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for with Jade City. And there are three books, three very long books, but just three books, um, which I think could be cool. Oh my God. Okay. This is the one that I have the highest hopes for. This is like, if I read no other books in 2024, I will be happy with myself for having read this. And that is Red Rising. Um, I actually did read Red Rising when I was a teenager, sometime when I was, I think maybe 16 or 17, and I loved it. 
I never read the rest of the series and I can barely remember anything about it other than my whole almost my whole family read it like we all read it and then was like oh my god it's good and then passed it on to the next person and I know that kind of the second era trilogy has been coming out lately um and I just really really need to read Red Rising basically um basically Red Rising is about there's this society that lives I think underground um this is fun I'm gonna try to do it without looking at the synopsis and maybe I'm just gonna be wrong but I really kind of I kind of hate just like reading things to you um so I'm gonna go for it but I'm pretty sure that this whole society lives underground um don't quote me on that and the color of your blood determines the class that you're gonna be in and our main character something happens I think his wife dies and he is a red, which is the lowest class of people based on your blood. And the gold are like the highest class. And he gets this insane surgery to like become a gold, but like he's not really a gold, he's just pretend. And then he tries to like rise through the ranks and like take over this whole system of corruption. It's insane. And it's so good and I know it's good because I loved it but I can barely remember anything about it except for what I just told you and I I don't think I'll rest until I read this like if you take one thing from this video it's that I have the highest hopes for Red Rising and I am so excited so excited to read it okay next up we have a book I mean all of these books I have high hopes for that's why they're in this video but this book I have particularly high hopes for, and that is Frenchman's Creek by Daphne du Maurier. Um, I know I haven't read Rebecca. Yes, I want to, but I almost might read this one first because I feel like anyone I talk to about Daphne du Maurier says, yes, Rebecca's amazing. We all know it, but read Frenchman's Creek and it has pirates and I love pirates. Um, in case you didn't know, hi, I'm Annie and I love pirates and pirate stories. Um, okay, I am going to read you the synopsis. This is a classic, by the way, so another like, fingers crossed, hopefully I read it, but I'm really excited about it. So, bored and restless in London's Restoration Court, Lady Donna escapes into the British countryside with her restlessness and thirst for adventure as her only guides. Eventually, Donna ran, lands in remote Navron, looking for peace of mind in its solitary woods and hidden creeks. She finds the passion her spirit craves in the love of a daring French pirate who is being hunted by all of Cornwall. Together, they embark upon a quest rife with danger and glory, one which bestows upon Donna the ultimate choice. Sacrifice her lover to certain death or risk her own life to save him. Sounds amazing. And I'm so excited. Another one I really, really, really want to read very soon <laughs> is The Will of the Many by James Islington. This seems like it would have all of the aspects of a fantasy novel that would make me give it five stars. Um... It's loosely based on the Roman Empire. Um, I think it involves trials of some sort and a magic school. And it's been really well, well reviewed. The downside to this is that this is only the first book in a series, but I kind of want to like get on that train because it, it's kind of fun when you're just waiting for the next book in a series to come out and you know, like you're with the rest of the world and you're like, oh my God, is it gonna be good? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the Catanian Republic, the hierarchy, may rule the world now, but they do not know everything. I tell them my name is Viz Telemus. I tell them I was orphaned after a tragic accident three years ago and the good fortune alone has led to my acceptance into their most prestigious school. I tell them that once I graduate, I will gladly join the rest of civilized society and allowing my strength, my drive, and my focus, what they call will, to be leached away and added to the power of those above me, as millions already do, as all must eventually do. I tell them that I belong, and they believe me. 
But the truth is, I have been sent to the Academy to find answers, to solve a murder, to search for an ancient weapon, to uncover secrets that may tear the Republic apart, and that I will never, ever cede my will to the Empire that executed my family. Oh my god, I'm feeling so much excitement. I'm sorry it's getting dark. It's not great for the lighting. Um, but you know, that's what happens when it's almost 4 p.m. here in the UK at winter time. Anyway, to survive though, I will still have to rise to the Academy's ranks. I will have to smile and make friends and pretend to be one of them and win. Because if I cannot, those who want to control me, who know my real name, will no longer have any use for me. And if the hierarchy finds out who I truly am, they will kill me. As you can tell, I'm kind of interested in these stories about someone going undercover to kind of rise to the top. Like it's giving Red Rising, but like in a different font. And I think that that's gonna work for me. Another one that I'm really excited about, this is kind of a relatively new release. I think it was released in the second half of 2023. And that is Penance by Eliza Clark. I loved Boy Parts by Eliza Clark. I read it maybe a couple months ago and I'm obsessed. I'm gonna write about it for my dissertation. So that's gonna be cool. Um, but this is very different. Uh, Boy Parts was her first novel. This is her second. And from what I can tell, it's like fictional true crime. I don't know, but it's gotten amazing reviews and it seems really cool. This is, am I getting pink eye? Why does that eye look different? Could be getting pink eye. Hooray, hooray, okay, okay. So this is the synopsis. If it gets much darker, I'm gonna have to move. Anyway, okay, okay. Do you know what happened already? Did you know her? Did you see it on the internet? Did you listen to a podcast? Did the host make jokes? Did you see the pictures of the body? Did you look for them? It's been nearly a decade since the horrifying murder of 16 year old Joan Wilson rocked Crow on Sea and the events of that terrible night are now being published for the first time. That story is Penance, a dizzying feat of masterful storytelling where Eliza Clark maneuvers us through the accounts, through accounts from the inhabitants of this small seaside town. Placing us in the capable hands of journalist Alex Z. Carelli, Clark allows him to construct what he claims is the definitive account of the murder and what led up to it. Built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members, painstaking historical research, and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves. The result is a riveting snap snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The only question is, how much of it is true? So I think it's like, she's writing the story as this guy who's writing a story that's like the true story of this case. I don't know, it sounds really cool. And I think because it's Eliza Clark, it's gonna be kind of crazy. So I'm really excited about it. Now for books that I actually own that are my five star predictions. I have three, so we're almost at the end of this video. The first one, All's Well by Mona Awad. I, okay, Bunny is probably one of my favorite books of all time. I have a plan to read all of Mona Awad's books from her first book all the way to Rouge, which is the one that just came out. I'm scared to read that because I heard some people didn't really like it, but it sounds so good. Anyway, this one is the one that I haven't read of hers that I am the most confident that I'll like. Um, the narrator struggles with chronic pain, which I also deal with um, and which Mona Awad deals with. So I think that that is an aspect of the story that is really gonna resonate with me. It also has a lot to do with Shakespeare and a play. I am an English lit student and I also act. Um, so it kind of sounds like the perfect book for me. Um, I will read you the back. Miranda Fitch's, God, it's hard to see, it's getting dark, okay. Miranda Fitch's life is a waking nightmare. The accident that ended her burgeoning acting career left her with excruciating chronic back pain, a failed marriage, and a deepening dependence on, pain on painkillers. 
Determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, she faces a mutinous cast hell-bent on staging Macbeth instead. That's when she reach, meets three strange benefactors who have an eerie knowledge of Miranda's past and a tantalizing promise for her future. One where the show goes on, her rebellious students get what's coming to them, and the invisible doubted pain that's kept her from the spotlight is made known. Very excited. Definitely could be a five star for me. Next up, a classic, which again, don't know why it's taken me this long to read. It's many people's favorite book. And I was actually supposed to read this for school, but it was set as the last book before exam. So I didn't have time to read it. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. I have read the first couple pages of this and they're probably the most beautiful things I've ever read. Um, wow, just wow. I have to read this in 2024 or maybe even 2023. I might take this with me back home to the States. I'm leaving day after tomorrow, so that's exciting. Um, must read it. Basically, if you don't know, this is about a guy named Dorian Gray who has like a painting, a portrait painted of him. Um, I actually totally forgot the plot of this, um, you know, like insanely popular book that I do actually know the plot of, but I've forgotten it now. So time to, time to read to you. Um, this follows Dorian Gray, who enthralled by his own exquisite portrait, exchanges his soul for eternal youth and beauty, influenced by his friend, Lord Henry Wadden, he is drawn into a corrupt double life, indulging his desires in secret while remaining a gentleman in the eyes of public society. Only his portrait bears the traces of his depravity. This definitive edition uh, doesn't matter. Okay, picture of Dorian Gray, very excited to read it. And definitely could be a five star. I mean, the writing in this is insane. Last, but definitely not least, we have a book that I've been wanting to read ever since it came out earlier this year, which is Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. This book is described as a gender swapped Princess Bride, and that is probably one of my favorite films ever. Don't like the book, but the film is amazing. Um, basically, this is about Tress, who is, I believe, living on this island. She likes this guy, then he goes missing, or he's captured by pirates or something um, because that's kind of what happens in Princess Bride. And then she sets off across this sea of spores to find him. And these spores like spawn into monsters and stuff. It sounds so good. I am definitely reading this either the end of this year or 2024. So this one I might actually read before next year, um, but I'm so excited. Trust the Emerald Sea. I just feel it. It's probably going to be five stars. I am so excited. That is my small, short, itty bitty little list of books that I want to read next year that I think could be five stars. Sorry that the lighting has gotten so shit. Um, it's dark now um, because I started filming this at three and now it's four. I hope that you're having a great day. If you watched to this part of the video, leave a pirate emoji. Does that exist? For Frenchman's Creek, leave that. Um, or alternatively, you could leave the blood drops because they're red for Red Rising. Um, if you liked this video, maybe consider subscribing if you would like. Um, or perhaps, you know, liking the video. I apologize for the poor quality of the lighting, um, but I am really excited to be making a lot more videos in the coming month and hopefully carrying that on when I get back to the UK again after Christmas. It's just been hard to do that with all my uni work, um, but I will see you in a video very soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.